Hey, hey, today we're gonna make a spaceship entirely from scratch, inspired by a YouTube video. Meta. Hey, 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 how's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, today's very exciting. Today, I'm gonna make a spaceship from scratch, something I've been wanting to do forever. And this video is gonna be a little different because basically, I was watching Adam Savage tested. I don't know if you're familiar with that channel. Love that channel. Adam Savage, Mythbusters, you know. He worked at ILM for a while. And then, you know, Mythbusters obviously and tested is really, I think they have like 5 million subscribers over there. So, you know, guy knows his stuff and I, and I like uh, picking up things from him and he's very prolific. So the other day he was doing um, a, a, a scratch build with styrene sheets, right? And he was kind of sharing like, okay, this is how uh, we used to do this at ILM. And he kind of, sh you know, I've used this before in my videos, you know that, but he kind of like took it to the next level and did a deep dive. So I want to be clear in this video, I'm going to link to his video that I watched, right? So this is not me doing a video showing you this is how you do this because, uh, you know, I just watched last week his video, right? So that that's weird. I like, I would never do that. So. What I'm saying is I saw his video and I was inspired to do that, this, what I'm about to do. And then it's kind of like, so now in this video, I'm playing the role of you, the viewer, right? So it's, I mean, I joked, but it's, it's kind of meta, right? So it's like, I'm doing what some of you may do when you watch my videos. And I guess the, the ultimate point of that is if you're somebody who watches these just for entertainment, like I, like I always say, I watch like, blacksmithing channels and things like that just because I enjoy it but I'm not gonna blacksmith but I want to show you this that maybe if you're somebody who's on the fence to just be like oh maybe I could do that or um, if you're somebody who does do this I'm just gonna be the middleman of, of this cool um, video and I'll definitely link to the video in the description below if I can link over here somewhere it'll be here but if it's not here for sure it'll be in the description now, the one thing that I did do, right, so modify it to make it my own, is this is also original design. So I went into my 3D printer and I printed this engine. And my idea was, I knew that the engine was probably gonna be a Greebly, not from raw styrene, right? And then I thought, I had this idea like, oh, what if the, the 3D print is sort of like a collar, sort of like a, a core foundation piece that I can build my ship from. Again, this is not me showing you something that I know how to do. I'm sharing with you that I watched this Adam Savage video. And this is what I did, but I think, you know, so maybe if you watch Adam Savage, you're like, oh, I don't know. You know, that guy's been doing this his whole life, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Whereas like, oh, if, if Anthony could do what he did, then maybe I can do it, right? I don't know, but let's get into it. All right. Right into Tinkercad. Don't go anywhere. This is only like 20 seconds. So yeah, so I just made this engine. Like I said, I just thought like, okay, this would be like a, a collar. This Greebly I grabbed free from Thingiverse. This I just made triangles, put some engines on there. And all I'm doing, like I said, is making a, a sleeve, a collar for my ship. And uh, very simple. And I have other videos that I'll link to where I go in depth about Tinkercad. It's basically, you know, 3D design light. And then, you know, I printed it in the resin printer and that's it. All right, so let's get into the build. All right, thank you, Adam Savage. So like I said, this is just inspired by the Adam Savage build. This is me just doing what he said. So you might wanna watch that video after you watch this. So I have that triangle shape that's my engine, right? So now everything is sort of feeding off of that. And like I always like to remind you or share with you, is that right now, um, I have an idea, but I don't have a plan, right? So all this stuff, I, I feel sometimes it's a little deceiving because when I edit these videos, obviously, you know, in real time, it's probably eight, nine hours. So everything happens really fast. And I've noticed that gives off the illusion of like, you know exactly what you're doing, right? Boom, 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 this next, but that's, editing, right? I had a rough idea. So here I'm just cutting out cardboard shapes because I learned that a long time ago. Even when I did the big uh, one-to-one -one size speeder bike, did that with cardboard, right? So here, you know, I just went to my hobby shop, 
when I saw Adam Savage's video, got some styrene sheets, very inexpensive, I don't know, four or five bucks. So now I have those cardboard templates, right? Where you, And then you're always refining, but it's good to have the physical tactile deal going on, right? So this is the cool thing about styrene is really you just score it and snap it, right? So it kind of makes you want to stay geometric just because that's what seems to work. You're not going to do like organic shapes. I mean, I guess you could, but that's, I think, a little more advanced. So now I'm just, I'm making a triangle, right? And then I cut out a swoop there because I thought like, okay, so this is where the window will be and it's going to open up this mouth. Again, if you watch my videos, you notice uh, I like to make that open mouth and I've discussed this before. So that's like, you know, I do similar things just so that it's sort of like a signature piece of mind so you can recognize my work. Nothing fancy, triangles, and then always with the open mouth, right? So this is another thing directly from Adam Savage's video that I thought was really cool. So you create a palette. He used a piece of wood. I didn't have wood. I just had some thick cardboard. And you cut off the bottom of an aluminum soda can or drink can. In my case, it's seltzer. <laughs> Um, and then you put down some glue and then you have this little reservoir where you put the, um, the glue, the, the glue for the styrene models. Right. And I'll probably even end up doing this now when I do model kits, but it's, it, yeah, just a really great, like, you know, it's little things where it's like, oh, okay. So now this is interesting. Like this will demonstrate what I was talking about. Like just making it up as I go along. So I'm thinking, okay, I need a wing. Right. So there's always lots of controversy in the comments where why do you need a wing if it's in space my answer is always well you know you got to land it on a planet but i don't know does it matter i don't know to me it's just whatever you find pleasing but you'll see uh coming up here in a little while once i um sort of see what that looks like i try something different but in the meantime so then um, when I was shopping for the styrene, then it's like, oh, there's little like bags of like these rods and squares and, you know, all these different shapes. And so I just grabbed up a, f a few things. I think I spent like 20 bucks. So now I have the glue and I'm like, okay, let me put these rails in there. And then that's just gonna, instead of like being like a flat wing, it's just gonna make it more dimensional, right? It's just gonna make it more interesting. And again, just sort of sitting there and I thought, oh, why don't I do this? No major plan, nothing fancy. So now I'm making this sandwich and I'm thinking, yeah, that was a good idea. <laughs> That's not always the case, but I'm like, okay. So once I, I sort of dial this in, it's gonna give a lot more dimension, a lot more interest to this um, piece, this wing. Now I'm taking out the Dremel. You could just use a knife or a saw. Just, I was using a knife and I, and I was using the, the nippers and I wasn't having good luck. So I was like, all right, let me just carefully Dremel it. But I had to be careful, right? Cause you could just burn it up. So now uh, I'm making the sandwich and I um, have an idea, right? I'm like, huh, maybe not. Maybe I don't need the sandwich. So now with just some 220, I'm going to clean up those edges because they're a little ragged because I just um, hit them with the uh, with the Dremel tool, right? So making it nice, cleaning up edges. And again, you know, eyeballing. And then here's kind of like, here you see in real time what I'm talking about, about just making it up. I'm like, that's what I figured it is, right? But if you remain open-minded, I was like, huh, I don't know, that doesn't look good. And then I'm just thinking... Structurally, I'm gonna have to super glue that on because it'll definitely just snap off. And then I'm going back and forth and then I'm like putting it aside because I'm like, all right, I'm not ready to commit, right? So I'm like, let me think about this. So now I just got a file and I'm going through and then here's the moment where I'm like, oh, what if it's just sort of like, like some kind of like hood scoop on the like side, those side scoops on the side of fast cars. And I was like, yeah, that's more interesting. And then it's just on a practical level, structurally, it's more sound, right? So I did that. So now here's the other tip from Adam Sav Savage is, you know, I have these, car these cardboard or construction paper templates. 
Now I'm gonna cut out panels, and for this, I have a thinner gauge of the styrene, right? So all I'm doing is just cutting out panels, um, and I'm just, you know, it's just, like he said, it's just arbitrary, right? It's like, okay, I'm gonna slice one here, I'm gonna slice it there, and they're all just slightly shy of the original, the master size that you're that you're seating them into, right? And that's what gives the illusion, or or sort of the visual cue of the panels, right? So this is the the lighter gauge um, plastic styrene, and then you see there I have my panels, and you see there that I work with filthy hands. I gotta figure out. I guess I gotta use gloves. <laughs> But I know I'm going to primer this, so I'm not too worried about it. So here, with his great tip with the little reservoir there for the glue, now I'm just laying these in with my filthy fingers. And then you'll see there that I notch them. And um, I'll put a link to the notcher. I think that notcher is for, you see there I'm notching. I think it's for like sheet metal, I guess, when you like drill holes in sheet metal and you want to make that hole square. Um, again, that's something I picked up from his video. So, and then you save those those squares, right? And you'll see later um, how you how you apply those. So here I'm just, I mean, this back piece was good, very good practice because it's just sort of a big square, not too crazy, and I can just start to put pieces in there and just sort of learn about this technique. So now I'm starting to assemble. And for sure you could do it without like how I 3D printed this engine. For sure you could do that. But I just, I guess this is my adaptation of what I saw in his video, right? So that's really starting to look like something and I'm starting to think, hey, well, all right. <laughs> now, now it gets harder because it's like, well, don't screw it up. <laughs> If it didn't come out that good, it could be like, well, I tried and, you know, you should try. But now it's like, oh, this could look good. <laughs> I better concentrate. <laughs> so there off camera, I just put a little piece in there to kind of stop it. And now I'm thinking, again, this is just not planned out. Just in a moment, I'm like, I need some kind of something. Because you see, that's just like a, a plain white, a plain white plane, <laughs> a plain white area there. So I'm like, oh yeah, it needs like grill, it needs like teeth. And again, this is like, I mean, it's even interesting to me that it's like, oh, this is really reminiscent of other things that I do. So it's like, it's definitely something in my brain. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. Triangles and gaping space maws. <laughs> Maybe that's the next of my, my next film title. The gaping triangle space maw. So now we got a spaceship, and then when you fly it by, although that's playing, I'm doing air quotes here, it actually does give you a lot of information when you do that, where you're like, oh, okay, that's working. So now I just wanna define the area that is the windshield of this sh ship. So I have this rod, um, same thing. Now I'm trying here to be careful. I, I, you know, I've admitted on this channel, like I do, have a hard time when things need to be precise, like precision, precision, which is why I tend to go like in a beat up world, right? Because that's what I can handle. That's what I can do, like rough and rustic, you know? But here with this windshield, I'm trying my best, you know, to up my game and I got close there. And then here, again, another thing that Adam Savage shared is now you have all these like little leftover uh, rectangles from when we cut out the shapes. And then now we're just adding them to just add like a little three-dimensional add interest kind of thing. All right, so now Greeblies. Greeblies, Greeblies, Greeblies. So this is a box of stuff. <laughs> you know, you save these. Now I'm just looking again for delicate little things. I typically, go big, go loud. Here I just I just cut out like this ladder. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be cool to put that on the side there. Got this little ladder and I got like little, they don't really show up in this video, but they're like little like knuckles and like just little like wire things that I'm gonna stick on the side there. I was like, oh, maybe you need a gun. 
but this gun, um, spoiler alert, is just going to end up being just not the right scale. It's too big. And then the Universal Greeblies. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so here I have all my parts on my palette. Not going to use them all, but th this kind of gives me some options. Like I said, I'm trying to be more delicate, more subtle with this ship, right? So I'm just... Like the, the thing that you, you can't see from this video, because it's in my head, is like just trying to be very light-handed, right? Just like a light touch. I got that little ladder on there. A couple like levers. I don't know what they were. I think they were like pistons or some kind of gearing for landing gear. Just like little greeblies. And now we got to put the universal greeblies on there just because, you know, because we have to. It's a religion. Okay, <laughs> so now that I've <laughs> worshipped at the altar of the Universal Greebly, now it's just sort of futzing, right? I'm like, oh, let me, oh, let me put a few squares here. Let me put something here, you know, like final answer. You squint, you look at it, and then I, th I think I put one more thing, and then I'm like, oh, okay, let me, um, put this little knob and again you can't see that but it's it is some thing from like an airplane model who knows some kind of gauge or something and then off camera I put those little cables on the side there that was a nice touch but obviously that didn't go smoothly <laughs> otherwise that would have been filmed but now I have some plastic wood just like what I was talking about earlier about wanting to get that um, that that windshield framing correct so i just had just a couple little tiny gaps and i was like all right since i'm going for it they're tiny little gaps but i'm like you know what let me fill them you know so i filled those up like i said you can barely tell but i'm i'm glad i did that right because I'm, I'm making the effort i want to i want to go there so now it's it's really satisfying, I have to tell you, if you've never done this before, because now it's like you have a spaceship, but it's like, it's not from a kit, right? It's like, you just kind of thought this up, and then here it is. And way more satisfying, you know, I, I'll admit to my, <laughs> to my critics that, yes, this is more satisfying than just 3D printing a ship, but for sure, 3D printing has a ton of value. But in this case, like, yeah, there is something more like, you know, like, okay, I, I built this, right? And what unlocked it for me, again, broke a record, was the Adam Savage video. It was like, oh, you know, anytime you see somebody do something, it's like, oh, okay. And I guess what I'm saying I, 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 that I hope that I can give you with this video is that, oh, you could do it too. So now some primer. There it is in the yard, priming away. And then I hit it with a, a, a gray. And then here's the off-white. That's going to be my base coat or light gray off-white. And then, of course, I'm going to protect that with clear because we're going to get in there and crunch it up. So now this paint job was really a process. Like, again, I was trying hard to do something interesting, right? So the first thing I got to do is there's like two things that need a base coat of black, like the inside of the engine that needs to be black in there. And then inside that mouth in the back, although you don't usually see it certain angles, certain moments, you'll see it. I just wanted to paint that, um, that recess back there black, right? So now I just have that base of black on the engine and in the maw. And you see a lot of hair dryer in this video because I'm trying to keep the party going, trying to keep the train rolling. So here we go. There's going to be a whole bunch of processes here before I land on something that I like. First thing I do is a black sludge wash because my initial thought was I have this off white. I'm just going to do a sludge wash just to pop these panels pop the engine detail that I made and then I'm just gonna hit it with a uh, silver rub and buff on some of the greeblies that was my first thought right and then maybe a little bit of gold so that's where I'm at now and I'm like okay I did it 
that's what I said I was going to do. <laughs> but it just doesn't, something's missing, right? So I'm like, okay, let me do a little flecking here. So this is a, a good technique where you just kind of put spots on it. And what it does is it just kind of breaks it up. It's almost like, like, like real world grain, right? So now I'm just trying to hit some high spots with some um, isopropo. And then here I'm putting on uh, some silver rub and buff exactly as I planned. But sometimes, you know, these are things that you conceive, you know, they're in your head. And then as soon as you see them, you're like, ah. So now I'm going to just pick out some parts with some gold just to, to give a little variation in there. And then now it's like, oh, let me put some like gold burnout marks like I'm like that's interesting definitely more interesting than just plain white let me let me seal that in clear so if I'm putting on the clear that means I think I'm done but here I'm like looking at it I'm like I don't like that so I'm like now I'm now the gloves are off I'm like maybe some red anodized paint and now I'm like to point of no return this is like no man's land right <laughs> Now I'm like, uh-oh, uh this could turn out really bad. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, maybe a little gold. Going hog wild now. I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's exciting, right? Because you're in unknown territory. It's like, all right, I guess I'm going to learn something to do or something not to do. And then I'm like, yeah, that's... That's good. Especially like when you do it in the light. But I'm like, mm, maybe blue. <laughs> I'm pushing it. I'm pushing my luck. But just being delicate. This is a big thing for me to just do like little delicate sweeps. So that that was that was cool. And like you said, like I like you said, like I said, is when you flip it around in the light at different angles, that's when it really is like, oh, this is interesting, right? So I'm like Okay, that's way more interesting than what I had going on before. But something's still not right. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And then so now instead of doing uh, the spirit-based wash, I'm going to do a, a water, an acrylic wash, right? So this is the second wash over the like the seventh coat of paint. But I have a reason for doing it with acrylic, which I'll reveal, I'll reveal later on, right? So now this is the same thing, this is no different, but you see there, just the light is like, oh, it's a little red, it's a little blue. So I'm, I know that I do like this, right? And, I, and I'm happy with the way I arrived at this, right? Where it was like unintentional and sort of like, all right, let's, let's try something new, right? So this project has already got me into an interesting place. So now, doing what I always do, dry it, patting it off, drying it, drying it, drying it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay. You know, it's like, it's it's worse before it gets better, right? So now, it just looks black. Like, why'd I bottle her with all those colors, right? But, as you'll see, um, I don't know if I do that next or the window. So I do the windows next. So... What I've done on this channel before, I think you've seen, is I really like this really thick black nail polish whenever I'm doing windows on spaceships. Just because it's thick, right? So it's easier to paint typically within like window panes because it's not going to get everywhere. It's easy to control. And I really like how glossy it is, right? So it definitely pops from the other paint and it gives the illusion of a window and I, and I like that right so that works so I'm sticking with it so now again so I just you know it's all just black let me um let me pull some of that off so now here's where it gets cool right so that's some isopropyl alcohol and now because I did that um that final wash in an acrylic water-based acrylic it's coming off very easily on the high spots, right? So now, now it's it's something, right? And it's like, it's weird because it was unintentional and it's like, it almost looks copper now. But here, 
Hold the phone. Nicotine spray. What? <laughs> this is a game changer. A friend of mine, Clint, you've seen him on my videos. He works in special effects. This nicotine spray is amazing. So you see me do the washes with the umber all the time. So this nicotine spray is exactly what it sounds like. You just hit it with a couple coats of this and you will be seeing a lot of the nicotine spray <laughs> in upcoming videos. Look at that. Oh man. Yeah. Right? And that color is like, I don't know where that color came from. And then now I'm just getting the nicotine spray um, off of the windshields. I like it on there, just not as heavy as on the rest of the piece. So a little Q-tip, alcohol action, blurp, blurp. And also too, at a certain point, now I'm very self-conscious of, of like, all right, we gotta, gotta put the brakes on. Yeah, and that just looks, that looks pretty cool. And again, that, you know, I discovered that paint job. I did not plan that paint job. So that makes it cool. And then here's some beauty shots, right? It's almost got like a copper red look. And then the fidelity, the detail on it is pretty, pretty cool. There's that bottom, right? Got those rectangles on there. And then the gaping mouth. <laughs> Very happy with this. I, I Thank you, Adam Savage. Yes. so happy with that right and for me personally such evolution right it's like you know i i have a a sort of uh um a place in my heart for spaceship builds on the ship because the very first spaceship build i ever did like years ago from the dollar store was me saying like oh i want to make a spaceship from scratch i've never done that right so if I'm sharing with you how I make films or cast or, or do visual effects, it's like, I've done this a lot of times. I'm going to share with you my tips and tricks, but some of the things I do on this channel are fun for me. Like when I built my first spaceship with parts from the dollar store, toys from the dollar store a couple years ago, I've come a long way since then. Right? So I want you, if you're a novice to think about that, right? It's like, you can go watch the video two years ago. It's toys from the dollar store and it looks like toys from the dollar store. And I dare say there's a little bit of evolution in that ship. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to say I'm proud of this ship, right? So for sure, I'm going to film this. I have an idea for a little video that I, I want to show you guys all the steps of making like a no budget short film. And I think I'm going to use this ship. So yeah, very happy with that. And hopefully, you know, that was interesting for you to watch or inspiring whatever and then you know for sure watch the adam savage video which is linked so as always i hope you found this video useful please like share subscribe leave a comment love to read the comments and be sure to check out the merch shop this is a film threat hat one of my favorite magazines from the 90s now it's online always practicing what i preach buy that hat to support them um buy the merch supports the channel subscribe if you're not subscribed that helps but you know you know the drill <laughs> buy the merch subscribe hit that bell <laughs> but remember i'm just here to help make sci-fi <laughs>